know of surety, Jesus is near. He's at the door. We welcome you to Getting Ready with Jamie Cart Ministries. to Getting Ready. My name is Jamie Card and we want you to know that we so appreciate you joining us. We have so much that we want to talk about with you and we have so much that we are seeing before our very eyes, before the coming of the Lord. Before we get started though, let's go to the Father and let's talk to Him. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you into this place, into the studio and Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just bless my friend, Lord. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would minister to their hearts, minister to their minds, and that, Lord, that we and they have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive your words in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, just take over and show us exactly what is going on in this earth around us and lord you have given us your word you have given us your word to tell us and to show us what the times are to look like that we're in and we appreciate god the beautiful signs that you are showing us now that have been written for thousands of years and lord we give you the praise for it lord use this broadcast to bring people into the kingdom of God, to open up our eyes, God, and give us great understanding. And I believe we have wisdom and knowledge and discernment and understanding, us and our friends. And we thank you for it, Lord. Make your word come alive, God, and stay alive in our minds and hearts in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen. If you agree with me, say amen. Amen, I agree with you also. Um, Again, my name is Jamie Cart, and we here at Jamie Cart Ministries want to welcome you to these very, very special broadcasts. Lord willing, for the next few weeks, we are going to very particularly look at some scriptures that have been prophesied in the book of Ezekiel and in the book of Joel and Acts to tell us what the signs are of the days right before the Messiah comes is going to look like. And I know that through this broadcast and through Jamie Cart Ministries, we teach and minister very much to show you what the environment and the atmosphere looks like before the Messiah comes. And there are some amazing signs that are happening right now and will be happening into next year. And we need to talk about these things and we need to talk about how the Bible, how God had told us, prelude to it happening so that we would know that Jesus Christ was at the door. And praise God, they're happening right now. And we are so excited to bring you these broadcasts. So let's get started on what the Word is saying, what the world and what the the sun, moon and the stars are showing us. That, would, that the Lord told us would happen right before He came to get us in the rapture. So I am so thankful, and I know you are too, to be living in these days. Praise the Lord. Now, I've been doing a lot of research in the last few weeks of my life, and um, sometimes when you're doing that research, it can get very difficult because when you're digging and you're researching and you're looking into things, you start to see things that will amaze you and at the same time we want to make sure that we communicate things exactly the way the word wants us to and the lord wants us to to you and to write it to paper and this is my monthly teaching letter that i have in front of me and this is a free gift from jamie carp ministries to you it is from us and the partners and friends who help us do this ministry through prayer and through financial giving and this letter is going out free and postage paid to many people all over this world and if you're not getting it 
we really invite you to do so because these letters the Lord truly writes to his people and shows them his heart and what he's wanting to show them so we're going to be doing some teaching out of these monthly teaching letters that have just been birthed in the last few months as of the time of this recording and if you watched any news here lately you have been hearing about lunar eclipses and you have been hearing about the blood moon and the Bible talks about blood moons and this is a specific sign that will take place and that it is a sign for God's people to know that he is at the door so let's look into what the blood moon means how the blood moons have been used in history to show God's people that something significant was getting ready to happen and that history was getting ready to change or was changing in the midst of the blood moons and so really get you something to write with get, get something to write on get your Bibles because you will want to take notes from this broadcast so you can look into this yourself and get it down in your heart and we invite you to do that right now now an eclipse NASA which is the National Aeronomics and Space Administration that's NASA that's our government's NASA that that really lets us know of everything that's going on in the galaxy and the solar system and the things to come when there are meteor showers when there is series of fallen stars when there are masses and things floating or coming toward the earth or different things happening what's going on on the moon different things the satellites that are put up in the atmosphere so that we can watch satellite television or have satellite internet and all the different amazing discoveries and wonders that the Lord has given mankind and the wisdom how to do it in, in the days that we're living. NASA is a part of that. Now according to NASA, if you go on nasa.gov you and you go in and you type in in the little search engine, engine up at the top of the page and you just type in eclipses in 2014 and 2015 you will then get something that comes up and it just says NASA Eclipse website and when you do that and why I'm being so specific is because if you have access to a computer and internet I want you to look yourself of what NASA is predicting to happen and it has already begun and when you go to that page if you go to the bottom you will see and on the top it's the top and the bottom of that page you will see listed the lunar eclipses and the dates that they are to happen in 2014 and 2015 and when you see those you will absolutely I mean you will actually see the dates that NASA is predicting that these eclipses will take place now just to explain a lunar eclipse is different from a solar eclipse of course lunar means moon solar means sun and when you have a full lunar eclipse a full moon eclipse that means the moon is passing directly behind the earth and a full lunar eclipse happens only when the sun the earth and the moon are aligned exactly with each other and when you have a full lunar eclipse the moon has the look of a deep red a, a milky deep red look and it looks like blood the moon actually turns to the complete color I mean color the moon itself is deep deep red which is an amazing thing to see especially and you can you can you are able if you go on nasa.gov to see pictures of full lunar eclipses now when there is a solar a full solar eclipse that is when the moon is blocking all the direct sunlight and from the sun and it actually turns daytime into complete darkness so that's the difference between the two now the reason that we need to know this is because the Bible tells us very specific 
signs that will happen in the last days before the rapture of the church. Yet these signs began in the book of Genesis. Let's look. In Genesis 1, verses 1 and verses 14, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 14. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. Lights in the skies. Sun is a light for us in the day. The moon is a light for us in the night. And God created this for us. He created them to separate day and night and to let them serve as signs to mark sacred times, days, and years. So God intentionally had these lights to come and to be created, to put in the sky so that, yes, we would have light, but yet, number two, is so that we would have a sign. He would use these amazing lights that he's put in the sky to show us signs. He, it, God will communicate through the sun, moon, and stars to his people and give us inklings and show us things to come. Show us things that he's wanting us to know. Now, are the sun, moon, and stars supposed to be worshipped? Absolutely not. We're supposed to be worshiping the one who created the sun, moon, and stars. Yet the Bible tells us from the very beginning, he created them to give us light and to give us signs. Praise the Lord. Now in Psalm 104 verse 19, and this is in the New Living Translation, and it reads, You made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to set. So again, God set these lights in the skies, and it is to mark seasons and times and to give us signs of what the Lord is saying to us, His people. Now, what is amazing when I was doing all this research is that I found that Israel has always known this. Israel, who is God's first chosen people, that is God's wife, Israel. Israel has always known to watch the sun, moon, and stars for God to communicate to them. They have always known it, and they have always taught their people that. And what is amazing is that we, as the church, are now discovering that God is speaking to us. Of course, we are God's people too. We have been grafted into Israel, Ephesians 2. And so God is communicating to us as his body, his church, and yet he will also be communicating to the entire world because the entire world can watch the sun, moon, and stars and also see when God is giving his people signs. Now, the Jewish calendar, of course, here in the western part of the world, we go by a Gregorian calendar. You've heard us talk about that so many times before in the past. Yet God has his calendar, and that is the calendar that he uses and his, and his people. Of course, we are to be looking at his calendar also. And even the Jewish calendar, it was formed by God on the lunar time, on the lunar, um, on the lunar way, on the moon ways, and in the moon's times. So that, even the Jewish calendar, God set it up to reflect the time of the moon and the, the lunar, the moon. So Israel has always known about this. They have through, through years and years and years have always known that God uses the sun, moon, and stars. Now, and they've also known that when God is showing a specific sign through the sun, moon, and stars, that history is about to change, that there is a huge change that's getting ready to happen to them and to the world. So why is that significant to us now as the church? Well, the reason is, is that NASA has predicted that there will be four blood moons that will occur in consecutive order, one right after the other. Now that in alone 
is an amazing miracle to take place. The other part of that is that they are landing on the holy feasts of God on Passover and at Sukkot, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. There is three major holy feasts of God, and they are the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And these four blood moons that are beginning in 2014 have already begun. The first one began, and we already had that blood moon, at Passover. Then the next one will happen in 2014 at the Feast of, Taberna Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkot, of 2014. The third blood moon will occur at Passover 2015, and the fourth blood moon will occur at the Feast of Tabernacles at 2015. Now, that is the second part of this miraculous sign in the heavenlies that God is speaking to his people about. Yet, what is even the third amazing part of this is that right in the midst of the second and the third blood moon will be a total solar eclipse. And this is all happening right now. Now let's look at to, let's just keep looking and digging, come digging with me church to see why this is absolutely crucial that we understand what we are looking at and what we are experiencing in this time in history and how God is speaking to us about the timing of that we are in. Praise the Lord. Joel 2 30 through 32 reads, and this is in the Amplified Translation, And I will show signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. Verse 31, The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. And whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered and saved. Now we see in Acts 2, what has happened is they are now at the Feast of Pentecost. Jesus is already raised from the dead, spent approximately 40 days with his disciples after he is raised from the dead. He has talked to them that there's going to be one that's going to come and that they're going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. He is now descended. He has went to heaven. And at the Feast of Pentecost, the disciples that were waiting in the upper room, they are all baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. And of course, that is a gift for the church at that time and a, a gift to the church, us today. And to be baptized, to be submerged into the Holy Spirit. And Jesus is the baptizer. That's what John said. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So Jesus is the one who baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. You have to be born again first to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And it's a wonderful gift. Gift. It is your prayer language. It is your language uh, that you speak to God. The enemy does not know what you're saying because you're speaking in tongues. And it is a beautiful thing. And seek God for this gift. Ask Him to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and power because it will edify you. It will build you up. It will strengthen you. And we all need this gift in the last days because we need the strength, the supernatural strength, the supernatural operating in the Holy Spirit that the baptism of the Holy Spirit brings to us. Praise the Lord. Now, on this day of the Feast of Pentecost, that's what's happened. These first disciples, they are the first ones to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and power. And what does the Holy Spirit do? He begins to speak Joel 2 through the Apostle Peter, who has just been baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. And listen to what the Holy Spirit says through, through the Apostle Peter. He says in Acts 2, 19 through 20, I'm reading in the New Living uh, Translation, and it reads, Then the Holy Spirit, through Apostle Peter, repeats this prophecy, And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood 
and fire and clouds of smoke. Verse 20, the sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. Again, God has told us in the Old Testament and the New Testament that he will bring before the great and glorious day that the Lord arrives See that right now, before the Lord arrives, before he says that the sun will become dark and the moon will turn to blood. Before, and anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the Lord is saying to us in the sun and the moon that he's coming. He's here. He's at the door. This is, this is real. This is happening. You and I, if you are still here, you are listening to this broadcast, you and I are this generation that shall see these things happening. So, why is that so important? Well, because this is going to take place before Jesus comes. Now, the Bible says to watch the fig tree. Now let's look at this and this is really going to help you put this together to, to truly see the signs of the blood moon and the total, the total solar eclipse when the sun will be turned to darkness, the moon into blood. Now let's also look at this sign that has to be in place before Jesus comes to get us in the rapture. Really pay attention here. Do not turn this off. Lock into me. Lock into the Holy Spirit of what he is teaching you right now. Now, all of these things have to be taking place at one time, the Bible says. There's these signs that Jesus told us in Matthew 24 and in Joel and in Acts and in Luke 21. All these signs, they, they have to take place all at one time. Now, let's look at this. Now, this is from Matthew 24. And again, you know, the disciples in Matthew 24, they come out and they ask Jesus, you know, what will be the signs what will be the signs of your coming and the end of the age? And immediately in Matthew 24, Jesus just starts talking and telling them, what is the signs of these two events, of him coming and the end of the age? So he incorporates this and just starts telling. And, and I, I believe that the Lord just told us everything clustered together because one will take place and begin and another will happen. One will begin and another will happen. And in our generation, we're already seeing the signs take place and we had begun seeing them quite some time ago but now we're seeing them all take place at one time so let's look at this Matthew 24 verses 32 through 34 and I'm reading out the Amplified translation and it reads from the fig tree learn this lesson now before I go any further who is the fig tree the fig tree throughout the entire Word of God is a symbol of Israel so God is saying Jesus Christ is telling us here watch the fig tree now what is so significant is that you've got to keep this in mind church is that at 70 AD the temple was destroyed and Israel the people of Israel were scattered and were not a nation any longer when that took place Israel did not become a nation until later on in 1948 now that you got to keep that in mind that Israel was not a nation from 70 AD to 1948 so Watch the fig tree is significant because Jesus was speaking to, to, to the disciples. And he was saying, watch the fig tree. And what he was saying is us in the future, watch Israel. Because Israel was no more, just 70 A.D. So approximately 40 some years after he said this, that Israel was no more. So now he's talking, so he's talking to us to watch the fig tree. And that's a big thing to keep in mind through this entire 
uh, series that we're on. From the fig tree, learn this lesson. As soon as its young shoots become soft and tender and it puts out its leaves, you know of a surety that summer is near. So what is Jesus talking about here? What is he saying as soon as its young shoots become soft and tender and it puts out its leaves, you know of a surety that summer is near. What does that mean to us? Well, Israel had been around for many, many, many years when he is sitting here talking to his disciples. So Israel's not young right there, is she? She's been around since many, <laughs> since really just since the times of Moses. So why is he saying the fig tree, watch her when she's young. Watch her when uh, she's soft and tender and she sprouts leaves because he was telling the disciples, watch the fig tree. He's telling us as disciples, watch the fig tree when she's young. And only us that have been alive from 1948 till present time are the ones that are seeing Israel young, born again, beginning and seeing her grow up now. We, you know, she began in 1948. She was really reborn in 1948 because she was not a nation before then. She ended being a nation in 70 AD. So we're the ones watching her grow up. We're the ones seeing her young and, and, and sprouting and having leaves. And now, of course, we in this generation, we see Israel very mature. She's no longer young and, and, and she's growing up and she's grown up. So he's saying, learn from Israel. Watch Israel. Watch the fig tree. And Again, as soon as its young shoots become soft and tender and it puts out its leaves, you know of a surety that summer is near. Verse 33, watch this church. So also when you see these signs all taken together, coming to pass, you may know of a surety that He is near at the very doors. Truly I tell you, this generation, what generation? The generation that sees Israel become a nation again. And when you see the sign of her becoming a nation again, and when you see the signs of Luke 21 and Matthew 24 and Acts 2 and Joel 2, when you see these signs along with Israel being a nation again, all taken together, coming to pass. Know of surety, Jesus is near. He's at the door. Thank you so much for watching Getting Ready today. This ministry is called to reach the law and to help the bride of Christ get ready for the wedding day, which is the rapture of the church. All this is made possible through the faithful prayers and financial support of our partners and friends. If you would like to become a part of the JCM family, please contact us. Also, send us your prayer needs and praise report. We would love to hear from you. Until next time, keep getting ready. Jesus is coming. Know of surety. Jesus is near. He's at the door. We welcome you to Getting Ready with Jamie Cart Ministries. To getting ready. My name is Jamie Card, and we want you to know that we so appreciate you joining us. We have so much that we want to talk about with you, and we have so much that we are seeing before our very eyes, before the coming of the Lord. Before we get started, though, let's go to the Father and let's talk to Him. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you into this place, into the studio, and Lord. I just pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just bless my friend, Lord, 
God, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would minister to their hearts, minister to their minds, and that, Lord, that we and they have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive your words in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, just take over and show us exactly what is going on in this earth around us. And Lord, you have given us your word. You have given us your word to tell us and to show us what the times are to look like that we're in. And we appreciate, God, the beautiful signs that you are showing us now that have been written for thousands of years. And Lord, we give you the praise for it. Lord, use this broadcast to bring people into the kingdom of God, to open up our eyes, God, and give us great understanding. And I believe we have wisdom and knowledge and discernment and understanding, us and our friends. And we thank you for it, Lord. Make your word come alive, God, and stay alive in our minds and hearts in these last days. In Jesus' name, amen. If you agree with me, say amen. Amen, I agree with you also. Um, again, my name is Jamie Cart, and we here at Jamie Cart Ministries want to welcome you to these very, very special broadcasts. Lord willing, for the next few weeks, we are going to very particularly look at some scriptures that have been prophesied in the book of Ezekiel and in the book of Joel and Acts to tell us what the signs of the days right before the Messiah comes is going to look like. And I know that through this broadcast and through Jamie Cart Ministries, we teach and minister very much to show you what the environment and the atmosphere looks like before the Messiah comes. And there are some amazing signs that are happening right now and will be happening into next year. And we need to talk about these things and we need to talk about how the Bible, how God had told us, prelude to it happening so that we would know that Jesus Christ was at the door. And praise God, they're happening right now. And we are so excited to bring you these broadcasts. So let's get started on what the Word is saying, what the world and what the, the sun, moon, and the stars are showing us that would that the Lord told us would happen right before He came to get us in the rapture. So I am so thankful, and I know you are too, to be living in these days. Praise the Lord. Now, I've been doing a lot of research in the last few weeks of my life, and um, sometimes when you're doing that research, it can get very difficult because when you're digging and you're researching and you're looking into things, you start to see things that will amaze you. And at the same time, we want to make sure that we communicate things exactly the way the Word wants us to and the Lord wants us to, to you, and to write it to paper. And this is my monthly teaching letter that I have in front of me. And this is a free gift from Jamie Carp Ministries to you. It is from us and the partners and friends who help us do this ministry through prayer and through financial giving. And this letter is going out free and postage paid to many people all over this world. And if you're not getting it, we really invite you to do so because these letters, the Lord truly writes to His people and shows them His heart and what He's wanting to show them. So we're going to be doing some teaching out of these monthly teaching letters that have just been birthed in the last few months as of the time of this recording. And if you watched any news here lately, you have been hearing about lunar eclipses and you have been hearing about the blood moon and the Bible talks about blood moons and this is a specific sign that will take place 
and that it is a sign for God's people to know that he is at the door. So let's look into what the blood moon means, how the blood moons have been used in history to show God's people that something significant was getting ready to happen and that history was getting ready to change or was changing in the midst of the blood moons. And so really get you something to write with, get, get something to write on, get your Bibles because you will want to take notes from this broadcast so you can look into this yourself and get it down in your heart. And we invite you to do that right now. Now, an eclipse. NASA, which is the National Aeronomics and Space Administration, that's NASA, that's our government's NASA, that that really lets us know of everything that's going on in the galaxy, in the solar system, and the things to come. When there are meteor showers, when there is a series of fallen stars, when there are masses and things floating or coming toward the earth or different things happening, what's going on on the moon, different things, the satellites that are put up in the atmosphere so that we can watch satellite television or have satellite internet and all the different amazing discoveries and wonders that the Lord has given mankind and the wisdom how to do it in, in the days that we're living. NASA is a part of that. Now according to NASA, if you go on nasa.gov you and you go in and you type in in the little search engine, engine up at the top of the page and you just type in eclipses in 2014 and 2015. You will then get something that comes up and it just says NASA Eclipse website. And when you do that, and why I'm being so specific is because if you have access to a computer and internet, I want you to look yourself of what NASA is predicting to happen. And it has already begun. And when you go to that page, if you go to the bottom, you will see and on the top, it's the top and the bottom of that page, you will see listed the lunar eclipses and the dates that they are to happen in 2014 and 2015. And when you see those, you will absolutely, I mean, you will actually see the dates that NASA is predicting that these eclipses will take place. Now, just to explain, a lunar eclipse is different.